Recently I made a mini review of this A3 Mini, a new gyro stabiliser from Hobby Eagle. If you're looking for just a general introduction then go watch that video there. Today I'm going to try it for real. I'm going to be putting it in my extremely beaten up old uh, bonsai flying wing. That way if I make some grave error in programming it at least I'm not going to write off anything important. The setup of the wing is very basic. All you have are the two left and right Elevon servos, the ESC, which provides the Beck function as well, and that's powered by this little 600 milliampere ZOP power LiPo. Very, very impressed with that little battery. In its previous configuration, this flew for nearly 10 minutes. Now, if you're on a gentle throttle, even longer. I'm using the same receiver. This is a tiny Radio Link R8SM and of course our Hobby Eagle A3 Mini. It's going to sit in there quite comfortably. Uh, it's just sitting below the depth of the pre-cut tray there. Before plugging it in though, I'm going to do some basic setup. The A3 Mini is configured via a program on the PC. Let's flip over to that and take a look at our settings. I covered the basics of how to connect the A3 Mini in my first video. Go back and check that if you're unsure how to get to this point. As we saw it's read the configuration from the gyro and this is set to its factory defaults at the moment. By default then the mode switch position one off, normal or, or gyro mode if you, if you will, and auto level. I'm happy with that for the moment, I'm not going to mess around with any of the gains, and until we plug it into the craft we won't know whether we need to reverse any of the servo settings. Also down here, nothing to do at the moment. Moving across then to the wing type, clearly we're going to be a flying wing, and here we can see that the aileron connection should be on the port wing and the elevator connection will be on starboard. We have no rudder in this particular instance. I'm going to write that now to the controller. Mount orientation flat face down socket pointing downwards. That is the orientation for my particular craft. And again, you don't have to write these every time, but as I said, getting long in the tooth, I'll do it now before I forget things. Moving to the receiver tab, we're going to be using the serial, not PPM. The selection I'm going to use clearly is going to be Radio Link, which is the standard SBUS. Well, standard in my world, at least. Nothing to worry about there. Again, the avoidance of doubt, I'm going to write that. And this time we have to restart the gyro for that setting to take effect. I'll go ahead and do that. Moving across to the servo tab then. Nothing for me to do in there at this moment in time. I'm not going to mess around with trims or anything until we've got the gyro set up in the plane. Interestingly though, if I do move the gyro around, you can see the outputs changing there to reflect the motion. Similarly in the sensor tab I can wiggle things around and we can see the accelerometer and gyroscope functioning. That's all that I need to do for the moment. Next job will be to put it into the plane and connect up the servos and see where we go from there. Just as a belt and braces I'll do a final right and then close the connection. As I'm going to be using the gyro in another craft, this being only a test, rather than get it all gooed up, I've just 3D printed a little holder for it so I can glue that in without affecting the gyro itself. As we saw in the wing diagram, the port connection is going to be the aileron. Just before we do that though, let me connect up my receiver, that being negative, positive and signal goes in like that. 
Next to that then is the aileron, which is the port side servo. Next elevator being the starboard servo. And finally the throttle, so no connection to rudder or aileron 2. Just before I power this up, I'm going to connect it back to the computer. Now you'll notice that there's no light on my receiver. To have both functioning, we need to power it via the battery there. And we can see now my receiver is powered. Clearly my transmitter is not on. With my radio connected then, we have a stable signal there and the coloured lights there indicate that it's in its S-Bus mode and we have a red LED there which indicates that it's in the gyro off mode. I've already programmed my transmitter with a mode switch. If I switch that into gyro the middle, mode. normal or gyro mode is blue stabilize mode. and stabilised mode there for flashing magenta. Gyro mode, manual mode. Zooming out now so that you can see the controls. If I move my ailerons, we get some movement there and elevator similarly. So if I, I, I'm pulling down and the elevators are going up, so that's correct, and vice versa. If I go right aileron, the starboard side goes up, which I think is right from memory. It looks like we're good to go. Throttle at the moment is deactivated and I should remember now to switch the rudder function off as we don't have one. Uh, if I arm the craft now. Throttle disabled. Throttle active. We have got our motor there. Throttle disabled. Let's flip back over to the computer then and see what's going on there. Now then if I connect Just going across the tabs then, the wing type, just double checking there, aileron on the left or port side. If we now go to the servo window and I wiggle my controls, there we can see with the aileron it's activating because of the delta mix, the aileron and elevator together. And similarly for the elevator movement. I should now go ahead really and switch off the rudder function. I don't think it's going to confuse things but we're not going to be using it. Go back to basics and here in the rudder I'm going to select that as off, aileron 2 being off by default in this configuration. So let's write that Everything's moving in the correct direction as far as I can see. There's only one more thing that I want to do. In the receiver tab, we can actually control the gain. By default, it's off. But I have, I think it's channel 8 assigned to a slider. Now if I move the slider, it's zero and it's sort of detente and we can go plus and minus 100 there. This is going to be useful if you encounter something like the control surfaces fluttering, which I've had before. You can adjust the gain to be able to counteract that. That's a feature that's not been available to me before. Just show you now as well the, the mode switch. Gyro mode. Stabilize mode. Gyro mode. Manual mode. So we can see that working. I'm going to go ahead now and stick the controller in. I don't think there's anything else I need to program. And then we can do a final check on the control surfaces. Time then for the final test. I have my transmitter switched on. Connect up our battery. And then we have to quickly get our plane horizontal. The gyro now has finished its stabilization. Doing our basic tests then. Gyro off, obviously. 
right aileron, that's good. Left aileron, down is up, up is down, so all is good there. The only real way to test the gyro is to put it into its fully stabilised mode. In gyro mode, because the surfaces are alternating, you cannot see really what's going on. Gyro mode, stabilised mode. So in stabilised mode, if we bank the aircraft this way, this elevon should go up and this one should go down and vice versa. If we do that, you can see it's gone up. And the opposite is true. Similarly, if we pitch the nose up, Difficult to see, but um, the elevons have gone down, and if I pitch the nose down, they've got they they go up. We're all good to go then. Uh, the next thing will be the test flight. Looking in the background there, you can probably guess where this gyro is going to end up next. Okie dokie, matey. a little bit squirrely, isn't it? What happened here then is that I forgot to switch the rates on my transmitter. Therefore, at high rates, it was way, way over controlled. And of course, the gyro was doing its job in uh, correcting all of my excessive inputs to excessive outputs. I'll switch the rates on now and we'll try again. This time then, mid rates, Gyro on, slider in the mid position. Try again. No, Throttle you want active. To launch it upside down. Or... <laughs> <laughs> At this point, I don't think it really matters. Well, it's still fairly squirrely, but <laughs> yeah, stabilised mode is working well. It's quite a breeze at the moment. I think it's a question like with any new device of uh, fine tuning. Two minutes. Having to hold in a lot of down, so I need to put some up in the elevons. back into gyro mode. So that's, if I take my, and that's the elevator, it's uh, one minute. Definitely more experimentation needed. Definitely need some up elevator or more up elevator than I had in there. Maybe even calm down the rates a little bit more, but we got there in the end. We had a successful flight and landing. Many thanks for watching.